exist. They, they do. Well, yeah, they exist. But I understand that sometimes there's like an empty seat for like the VIP. So sometimes I guess it's shorter handed, maybe like six handed. Right. In, in the Macau public games, it's usually eight or nine handed with a VIP seat. Mm -hmm. um, but the the short deck stuff hasn't hasn't played nine handed oh, in a long time. I see. And is short deck more popular now, or is it kind of still both games running? Um. Well, it's not legal in Macau yet. Sure. So it's it's not going to be more popular yet. Mm -hmm. But I, from what I can tell, okay. every single person who plays it after playing No Limit likes it and thinks it's better. And uh, so it it will be more it, popular. It's no doubt growing at in, least in, in the Asia scene. Right. And Triton, um, they're talking about running a smaller buy-in short deck tournament. Yep. Maybe the next stop in Jeju. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll get more of the tournament pros who are kind of scared off by the big buy-in to, to flick it in there and uh, sure and kind of get yeah. their feet wet. Funny, and does the first time I ever seen short deck, I was watching. I was like, I, I feel like I know how to play the game, but I don't want. I feel like when I put my money in, I'm gonna lose it very fast. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's cool because all, you know, people can. Well, let's see if we got a hand here. I don't. Yeah, this is not gonna be. Like Wang Chang is going to bet here pocket sixes. I wasn't sure. I think he's a pre-flop raiser, but Shanghai Wang is flop. Shanghai Wang is what everyone calls him. Yeah, Shanghai Wang. I'll go with that. And I believe his name is Chong, Chong Wong. And then ST got a little just call there. Trapping. Now, have you ever played with uh, Chong Wong at all? This guy here? That's Shanghai Wong. Yeah, I actually played with him a couple nights, or we played all night uh, a few days ago. So he's this guy's Shanghai Wong. That's Shanghai Wong. That's ST. Okay, I thought you guys were saying the same thing. Now I figured it out. The guy with pocket sixes, everyone calls Shanghai Wong. Let's go with that. The guy who's gonna win this hand with King Queen. That's ST. Damn, this is you guys. Yeah, I played. I played some some big pots with him the other night, and he's he's kind of crazy and he's action sometimes. Well, ST is gonna call here. 35,000 euros. I think, I'm guessing they've played a bunch and they're familiar with each other. And I would think Shanghai Wong um, isn't going to isn't gonna go for it. Like, ST, when you're on the river against ST, he usually has a good hand. Especially when he's check calling. Ambitious bluff here, but sometimes when you got such a bad hand on a river, you just feel obligated when more cards look scary. This would be. Right, maybe he bets like 400,000, just goes for it. Yeah, 400,000. That'd be intense. Like, you know, he, if he was the pre flop raiser, he has more aces, ace kings. To be and, fair, yes. And it looks like he's charging the flush. He is going to bet again. Oh, he's trying to get an ace to fold. I would like that more time for But I don't, even, I, mean, I don't think he's going to fold an ace of that size, so. ST here. He's got King Queen. I think this is just a mandatory mandatory call. Sometimes you're up against a flush. No real reason to raise. Find like you usually don't get worse to call. Yeah, exactly. raise. There'd have to be some crazy, crazy, crazy dynamics yeah. to and ever consider raising. And we just started this session, so just that's not possible. So let's we'll see. Yes, he's just maybe maybe forgot no, what he has. No, no, don't do that. No, you did not do that. S T. Oh my God, that hurts. That hurts. That hurts me. That hurts me. Can we? Can we? Can we get those cards back? <laughs> Why did he fold? He had the. He had the king. No, no, no. He didn't. The nutted king, right? Like, okay, maybe if he had like king ten, you can maybe make an excuse, right? But king. The nutted king is. The nutted king, and he could have so many worse hands that he can. He can. Happily fold the ace, maybe, if he wants to find some folds. Right, like you should be. Oh, that's like the top of his range that wasn't a five card hand. Jungle Man, like, you know, years ago when he was getting in new to it, he's obviously such a super expert at no limit hold'em. Right. But he'd get in big games and he just, like, he couldn't keep it together. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's clear that he's he's thought about that and how it's given away money. Mm -hmm. You know, when a river card shows up and getting mad or. Mm -hmm. I know one of my favorite ones is just if I'm like betting the river, but I don't have the nuts, and I'm I'm scared of getting raised, and I'm like I know it's tough, and then the person does a thing where you know they're not going to raise when they're they're kind of giving away they're going to call, and then all of a sudden you can relax, and if you want you can chat to them, but um like that's just a simple one that that just saves you a lot of a lot of decisions just when yep. you know someone. Of oh, sure has yeah. gone down a certain path in like their brain. He can't, like, all of a sudden just pop out of a raise. That would be insane, right? Right, right. Got multi-way pot coming here, though. Let's talk about this. Three suited aces, one pocket nines, and an inside straight draw for Shanghai Wong. I think, I think Shanghai Wong is going to work this one out somehow. 
He's the only one with kind of a cool hand. No one else has too big of a piece. Well, if he puts two barrels in here, I'm almost certain he's going to win this pot. And he's not folding. He's on the, he's on the button. Preflop Razor is Paul Fua right now. He checks. <laughs> the blinds usually have nothing in this board. And I guess uh, Paul raised pre. Cut off. Makes sense. It's already in action. So it's about 18,000. About a third of the pot. Mm, interesting size. Uh, you know, this might... Well, it's going to get Phil Ivy to come along. I think Elton probably should fold, right? After a bat and a call. He might call just because he got the backdoor back flush, flush draw. Backdoor super deep. Yeah. So he's got the potential. He might even raise. I mean, he he, uh, he knows Shanghai enough that he, he might think he can get away with, you know, doing something. So if he knows down. Shanghai Wong is betting a lot, he knows Ivy's on call of any like middling pairs. If he check raises here, which he does, he's going to get the guy who just betting because he's on the button. And then uh, Ivy's just going to fold his mid pairs, right? Right, now we get to see if Shanghai Wong is going to Pretty sick play. Hey, look who it is. Tom. <laughs> Shanghai Wong, yeah, peel this. Oh, Shanghai Wong is going to peel up the ace four high right now. Hey guys, it's Tom Duan. Tom I Duan! Just, I just stole Gabe's headset, just, just to throw in there. I think Shanghai Wong has the I'm about to do something crazy look. <laughs> So Tom looks like that's a good read because he just <laughs> put in 80,000 80, euros. And turn two pair of wolves. This crazy move will, won't work now because Elton has yeah. got two pair. He, he's up. He won't need to do the crazy move because he's got a top pair. So imagine Elton's going to keep betting here, right? He's not going to put Shanghai Wong on ace king because eight, Shanghai Wong didn't three bet Paul Fua. So he actually shouldn't really be worried about anything and to be willing to get all the money in, technically. Right. Uh, sh four five is four five Shanghai. would be the only hand you're really worried about, and occasionally Maybe deuces that's increase. That's yes, that's that's deuces in four five. Uh, he probably thinks he has a king. He's probably not going to get too greedy with these bets because uh, is that 120? 120. So I like the smaller bet because his opponent most likely has king, queen, king, jack if he's going to continue. Occasionally he does a hand, has a hand like ace four and ace five. Yes, is it ish? So I don't ever expect Shanghai Wong to fold this turn just because he's stronger than what he's perceived to have. I mean, if Shanghai Wong just ripped it all in, <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy, but like Tom's you know, laughing in the background. What's What's he gonna call with? He's gonna He's gonna look him up at the set, put all the money in when he puts it all in. Well, they are playing 250 big blinds deep. He does make the call, so we're coming to a river. He's got 23 percent. River's a jack. Doesn't really change anything. But if I'm Elton here, I think I'm betting pretty big. I'm going to hope Shanghai Wong River 2 pair of like King Jack. Yeah, you got to bet this. You got to bet this. There's, there's no bluffs that you can, you know, if you check and you're hoping he bluffs, what do you, what could he have? Usually what happens is if you check, your opponent just check back and you just give him a free showdown like King Queen, Ace 5, Ace 4. Right, there's no, there's no air balls that he could have really. Unless he just floated, you know, made it in suicide float only, type of thing. The only air ball I can see and I can only see is because I'm a DJ and I see 4-6 suited and like 5-6 oh, yeah. suited. <laughs> Yeah, where are the 5-6 at? Where are you playing over there now? So, Elton, the one-drop champion, is going for a big bet, I believe. I asked him how your guys' heads-up game was going. I think he's looking for a snap call, Chips. I just had about this one morning, asked him what he was up to, and he said you guys were playing heads-up. I think he bet, like, 200,000, so he's basically trying to size against King-Queen. Two weeks, officially. Wow, um, that's long. I've yeah, he's just doing the old thing. He makes the call and gets shown the bad news. <laughs> All right, so well, thank nice you, Gabe. And Adios. let's get Tom Duan in here. You can still do it and stuff, but... Uh, it won't be as often. Yeah, it's, it's nice having this kind of structure and then having the ante. Basically, it gives everyone a chance to put some more interesting or kind of what I would call funny plays in to yeah. their to their game, and even if it's not perfect, they can get away with it a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this oh, could be quite a big hand here. So Ivy raised, Patrick I'm sure will re-raise, and I don't expect Ivy to fold, he has king-queen suited. 
Um, I never expect. I, I expect everything and nothing from him. <laughs> <laughs> Ivy and Patrick have obviously played a ton of uh, very big poker against each other over I the know. years. But actually, the last few years, I don't think they've played too much. In a much. game together? Ooh. I'm sure they've played oh, yeah. some, but but I don't think it's been. Uh, you know, the three of us used to play <laughs> against each other all the time. And the last few years, I don't think Ivy and Patrick have played very often. I haven't played with Patrick very much myself. This is such a um, like back-in-the-day situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this could be quite a big pot. You had given a spoiler about some fireworks. I wouldn't be shocked if it was this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're, now you're ruining more. No, because uh, it hasn't been... Uh, we're 30 minutes late. Oh. Uh. I'm just teasing. Okay, so I'm now not Patrick flop top set here. He has he has a lot of options here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he checks. I wouldn't be surprised if he bets. And uh, I don't expect Ivy to fold unless Patrick bets huge. Yeah. So Ivy bets only f or Patrick bets only forty thousand. Ivy's not going to fold here. I expect him usually to call and hope to hit on the turn, but sometimes he'll raise the flop here. And now if a 10 pulls off, there would have been a really big pot there. Oh, wow. So now this is a little bit of a funny spot for Patrick, actually, because since he has two aces, there's not that much he can hope that Ivy has to be able to call him yeah. really big. There's one ace Ivy could have. Maybe he ha Ivy has king jack or something. Probably Ivy doesn't have a set of jacks or set of sevens or he would raise the flop. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a pretty interesting turn for Patrick to check if he wants. But it also makes sense for him to make another bet uh, some of the time, especially with Patrick's history that he a lot of times can put a lot of pressure on people. And if I was in Ivy's shoes here with King Queen, you know, I would be cranky and unhappy and a bunch of the time I would end up folding, but I sometimes would also think back through all the hands that Patrick shows up with 8-9 or something here and, and call on the turn. And I think that's what Ivy's thinking through here. I expect him to fold, but I wouldn't be shocked if he calls. It's just so fascinating. There's no emotion on, the, on his face. <laughs> it's just like from the beginning until the end, it's always the same face. It's just so crazy. And this is a, a little bit of a, you know, a, a little unusual of a call, but not a, not a big surprise. And now Patrick, I expect, will bet again. I, if I were Patrick, I would be probably just like laughing right now, be so happy. I mean, this is just so much work just to stay, you know, serious like that. Oh, I see you in the background over there, Tatiana, <laughs> there even though you're, you're common. I am multiplying. <laughs> wow. So the same thing I had said earlier, how Patrick has two aces and Phil can only have one, mm -hmm. that still applies. And that's, I think, part of why Patrick's betting so big here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't expect Phil to often have a hand that's just one pair, like an ace-10, king-queen, something like this. Um, he's hoping that Phil has something like two pair or a set, and it's going to feel like he has to call. And Phil just quickly folds it there. Doesn't try to be heroic. <laughs> Seems like he wants to. That is a big pot. Sorry, but oh no, I was go. just saying that I did. I mean, I would hear that even when they're playing um, tournaments. Sometimes people are like, oh no, actually, I meant this and I meant that, and it's like it's really annoying. Oh yeah, tournaments it can get quite funny because it's you know everyone has the same rules, but then it can be funny where sometimes I, I've seen some of the really big uh, what we call VIPs, like the really big fish from Macau, get stuck in a spot where they clearly weren't angling, didn't mean anything wrong, but they didn't put the chips in right. And yet I've seen other people that did try to pull something a little funny. So it's, it's a very hard thing to balance. Oh, wow. And so this should be a huge pot. We have 
Paul will have the set of nines, and Elton will have the set of sevens. Now, there are three hearts on board, which could make the pot a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. but I still expect it'll get very big. Just the and so Elton bets 40. Bigger than flash, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and so Paul's making a jo joke here because when we play short deck, Just we, uh, for about the first few years it was played, everyone played the normal way that a full house mm -hmm. beats beats a, a flush. Draw. And just lately, yeah, about the last six months or so, everyone started playing <laughs> that a flush beats a full house because uh -huh. flushes are less common. So that's the joke Paul's making here. My cut cannot be off suit. And uh, then he's talking a lot before race, race, race. I'm guessing that he's going to raise. And yeah, he is with this set. And Elton's not going to be folding. <laughs> Yeah, so Paul started this hand with 925,000. They're playing 2,000, 4,000, so that's what we would call 230 big blinds, which mm -hmm. is pretty deep stacked. Yeah. And a set's a very good hand, but there are three hearts on the board. Um, so 230 big blinds with three people in the pot is, is a pretty big amount to, to get in the middle on a three flush board with middle set or bottom set, but I still expect that that'll end up happening a lot of time depending on what the turn is here. And that's partly because Paul and Elton both have a history. They both play big pots against uh -huh. each other. Sometimes they try to bluff each other. I can't even speak English. Yeah, and on this card, it's a <laughs> offsuit three, so it's gonna be very hard for Elton to fold here, I think. Just about because whatever Paul bets, Elton's at a minimum so calling and very often going to be shoving that. because Paul only has about 800,000 left mm -hmm. <laughs> and the pot's 326. <laughs> so if Paul bets, say, 200,000, yeah. yes. if I was in Elton's spot, I'd probably call, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be surprised if he shoves here because <laughs> I've seen Elton and Paul have a lot of times that they get in, even though they both generally play pretty tight, they can sometimes get in some Is pretty loose, thing? loose hands against each other. I'm not sure. <laughs> but so I think Elton might be thinking if Paul bets 200,000 or so and he shoves, maybe Paul has kings with the king of hearts uh -huh. or aces with the ace of hearts or something and Elton can get the money in ahead. But also it's very possible. I think the right play if Paul bets 200 for Elton here is to call. Um... And I would guess that's what he does, but I wouldn't be shocked if he shows. And it's funny, if you put these hands in... Oh, and Paul bet really big, so he's kind of forcing Elton to shove here. Paul bet 330,000. And, uh... Only has... 595? Oh, is that... This is what he has left? I thought the 925 was to start the hand. Okay, so this is... It I was giving some bad commentary. I'm not a very good commentator here, apparently. I talk a lot. <laughs> I haven't slept enough. And You're um, I'm, I'm the same, so the, we're the B squad. <laughs> <laughs> we're the B squad? Hope we're funny then. I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm At least you showed up there. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, so there's a one-minute shot clock, apparently. Just so there is, yes. Now, so... Okay, not so serious. Oh, and Elton calls here. Okay. So this is... There's almost a million in the pot already, and Paul only has 600,000 more. Look at that. So if the river is not a heart, they're going to be getting the money in there. Oh, oh I guess or an 8 or a 10. There's actually a very good chance this freezes both of them up. That is a really big pot. That's true. So, basically, in Paul's spot, I think he's going to be checking most of the time. And then I don't think Elton's, this would be a very surprising value bet by Elton. So I expect this to go check, check on the river. What's the biggest pot that was televised ever? I wonder how much was it? I think as of, you know, a few months ago, uh -huh. I had won some pot versus Ivy for a million and a half. Uh -huh. But just now, Matt Kirk lost mm. like four million euros or four, four million Canadian or something like that on TV. So I'm guessing that they that had that beat. I'm not sure. I don't know if that was, I don't think it was one pot, but I still, I would guess they had some pots over a million oh and a half days. there. I think if this had been a different river, this might have been the new biggest pot on TV. But with the the River 8, I expect it to go check, check here. How long have we been playing? For an hour and it's already happening? We still have some time. <laughs> we might push it. 
Do you think he's upset? Um, yeah, I think I think he's uh, a little bit acting with his mm -hmm. moves there, but I think he actually also is upset that the river's an ape because uh, most rivers, I think he would have shoved and Elton would have called. And I think this was actually quite a good play by Elton. Oh, wow. And this is a very surprising shove to me. Um, so Paul shoves 600,000 into a pot of... Now we're at 1.5. This is bigger than yours. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is a good shove by Paul. Um, a bunch of the Elton's time, because call? I don't think Elton has many 10s in his range. Mm -hmm. But I did not expect Paul to do it. I think uh, Elton could call here. I mean, he could, he, he could think Paul's bluffing, but... Mm -hmm. Paul often in the big pots can play kind of tight, especially versus someone like Elton. Mm -hmm. But then again, Elton's getting to risk 600,000. He wins 1.6 million. So he's, he only needs to be winning here. I don't know the math, something 27, 28% of the uh -huh. time, something like that. And he has three of a kind. And Paul can have a 10 much more than Elton, but it's still not that easy for him to have a 10. So Elton's only really beat by flushes uh -huh. or a set of jacks or a set of nines. But I think he might expect that a set of jacks or set of nines, Paul wouldn't bet. I'm surprised that Paul's betting them. Um, it's taking a long time to count all these. <laughs> what a pot. He doesn't seem very pleased. Well, yeah, he's definitely <laughs> not pleased. I mean, I think on the turn, Elton, you know, probably thought he had the best hand a lot of the time. And also, if he had paired the board, would have almost definitely yeah. thought he was winning. And on this river, think, I think he's uh, not happy. Do you think Paul being so excited right now is a, a, give, a giveaway? Um, I think Paul is quite good at balancing He's very used to playing very big stakes poker, mm -hmm. so is Elton, and so I think they're they're both quite good at balancing uh, kind of live tells and big pots and stuff. That doesn't mean you still sometimes get them. So maybe Elton yeah. did notice. Oh, Paul seems a little too relaxed here, mm -hmm. just just like you did. And all of a sudden, straddles happen in Shanghai Wong's state of the table because <laughs> he was happy to play bigger. Oh, everyone's drinking whiskey. And they're putting ice in their whiskey. That is a sin. No, a small uh, amount. If it's just a small amount of ice, it's nice. It's, it's just too much. It's supposed to just be a drop of water to open it up. That's it. Which is what about those circular ice ball things eh. that they put in? I like those. You don't like I them? I, I like them in like an old-fashioned. Uh, see, old-fashioned, I never. they have something in them that I don't like. I'm not sure uh. what. Okay, and so... The graphics say 3-bet, but we actually just raised here because there's an 8,000 straddle. Mm -hmm. So we just made a normal open raise to 26,000. Paul has king-5 offsuit, so his cards should already be in the muck and we should be on to the next hand. But maybe those McCallans are hitting him there a little bit and he's trying to gamble. Now, I think he is in position on Ray Cal, mm -hmm. so it's, you know... Not, not a problem to play this hand, it's okay, uh, but he's still going to get himself in trouble some of the time here. <laughs> and it would have been different if Recal was one position over, basically. Uh -huh. If we're playing 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 now, yeah. so if Recal had been the 4,000 and raised, that's different. As the 2,000, Recal's got a bit of a tighter hand, it's a little harder for Paul to fight. And now Recal bets a very small bet of 20,000 here, and Paul's thinking of going a little crazy, and it's not going to work out well for him if he does. No chickens will be stolen. That is for sure. <laughs> it is... Almost impossible to see Paul winning this hand. I think it would need to come oh. either a queen or a ten and you know jack or ten and a nine for him to have any chance. And it might. <laughs> oh, Tatiana, come on! Hey, it's poker. Anything can happen. <laughs> Quite a big pot of 220,000 here. Oh, and Recal with the accurate read, trying to bluff on TV, Paul. He is right. That is what Paul's trying to do.
I am noticing a lot more <laughs> animation and talking while they're playing. I think that's partly because everyone's friendly, and mm -hmm. then I think it's also uh, related to, you know, everyone drinking, <laughs> playing a, a TV cash game that it's people that we play against a lot. So you kind of, if someone's coming in, staring at you, not giving anything up, a lot of times you don't want to give anything back to them, right? Yeah. Whereas when everyone's more relaxed, it can breed this kind of interesting game. Yeah, it's, it's good energy, good vibes, so you can like have fun too, I feel like. Because sometimes there's games where they're just staring at each other and just quiet all the time. Yes, and I, I don't really like that. Okay, and Rui bets 300 out of 220 pot, and it looks like he has it. I, if I was in Paul's spot, would be wanting to fold, about to fold, about to fold, and then probably look over and be like, oh, it's Rikau, what can I do, and throw the money in. It's, this is a pretty hard Paul, a hard fold for Paul with the king here, because Rikau just finds a way to bluff, like I said. Wow. Rikau. It's short deck. Rikau's over bet. This would be a very, very surprising and very good fold if Paul somehow found it, but I don't expect he can. And when Rikau bets this big, I do think almost always he's either bluffing or has Paul beat, but still, uh -huh. it's just so hard to fold to Rikau. He bluffs so much, and when he hits a big hand, sometimes he just deserves the money. <laughs> and so what Paul was hoping for here is that Rikau had had, you know, 10 jack or 10-9 uh -huh. or jack-9 or something. Bet the flop Paul raised and Rikau wanted to call. And that's definitely possible. Uh -huh. um, I, I think it's... There's an argument that Paul should have folded the river there. And I think, you know, if it was me, I'd probably be sitting there saying I shouldn't fold this, wanting to fold it, ending up calling and being mad at myself after. And I'm yeah, guessing that's how Paul's feeling, right? No. Cannot. No object. <laughs> Cannot object. <laughs> Ace is on the bottom. Wow, Patrick, you're so lucky. Thank <laughs> you. This is a good one for some easy, easy game. Now it gets interesting. All right, guys, this is me, Randy, Lou, Nanonoko. We're back. Well, just me by myself, actually. So. It looks like we're playing a straddle. I didn't catch if this was going to be on full time or just temporarily. Heard Tom Duan was giving some good commentary. Single raised pot for 44,000 euros. I so stupid, always give money to recall. How many chips do you have in the economy? 1.6. And uh, nine players left, right? How many left? Nine, nine yeah. Nine left. Watch the average. All right, so this is a re-raise pot here. I'm just trying to get in touch with 63. what is going on ever since I left. So it's like Elton's got king three, but just by the field. Shanghai... Feels like Shanghai Wong is betting with his pair, bottom pair. Yeah. No kicker. Okay. I had 800 earlier today. I had yeah around that at least twice and just bust, uh, busted three bullets. And I, I won so one hand. Alton here of King Three. Yeah, they move quick in that tournament. I mean, Offsuit really doesn't have anything. I guess yeah. he's considering making a play at this. Well, with these players, things, things, things. Sure. Seems seems a little yeah, bit ambitious, I, I really like the of this but I guess the, the game is so is splashy. I mean, I didn't follow this action completely, so it's hard for me to give you accurate information. Are you gonna try to play the short deck tomorrow? It's really fun. Yes, you should get in, should get in there and try to play it. It's really I might, fun. I might play the short deck cast so looks like later. Alton yeah. raised to 133,000. This is I pretty sick. I, I wonder if Shanghai Wong is actually going to call here of 6-5. It just seems like two guys duking it out in like a home game, but we're in for a million euros instead. The way you bet is really similar to PLO in a lot of ways, except it's no limit, so you can just shove. But like in a lot of spots where you can't shove, 
you kind of choose the same hands that you would use in PLO rather than a no limit to bet with. Yeah, this so is an insane pot. More like a bigger bets, like a pot size bets in this game. You face big bets a lot. Sometimes. So apparently yeah, it's been yeah, a triple sure. straddle pot. That's what I've been told by the chat. Equities run super close to <laughs> It seems always. insane. You get there a lot. Like open enders are really sweet. All I know is just yeah, two like guys yeah, just really going good. to war. One has king three high. Doesn't mean has runner, awesome. runner three awesome. high flush draw. Another guy has no, bottom pair, even if, I mean, back door really straight draw. Yeah, I, mean, I guess really weak back doors is the yeah. the way to really play this hand. I mean, even normal knowing me that don't Two K, four K, eight K, sixteen K. He's gonna give this pot up. So Elton Sank showing you. You can do it How to spend 133,000 really euros with king three high to win 108,000 euros. Yeah. It's a satellite, but this is all just an, a big satellite to the background table, so you know, like... <laughs> it's a satellite to a satellite. Right, right, it's just step two. Pawfa has ace-queen. Alton saying if ace-eight suited, it's going to see a flop. I imagine at least. <laughs> yeah. oh, is he grabbing a? Is he grabbing a handful? A lot of guys have been three betting these hands so far. Boom. So 100k roughly. Kind of a reckless. Speaking of live tells, that's kind of a reckless way to throw it in. I would be more likely. I'd be leaning towards that he was spewing here. Well, you are accurate right now. Paul. There's no way Paul's folding, right? Like. He's been splashing in pots lately. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all three options. 275. You know, Paul, he's not really like a technical player, but I think he, he like reads the, how do I say, like he reads the Chinese like mindset well and all the people he plays with. Mm -hmm. um, he's grabbing for more chips. Well, no so he grabbed two, <laughs> then he grabbed like seven of them, and now he, he dropped them all now. No right, that's... that's he, he's kind of not keeping it together. Yeah, it's like... We're going to play shallow poker soon. Let's see what he says. Let's see what he says. I mean, he was saying they're deeper, but now we're straddling. Collection of my favorite gambler. Whoa. Make the call. Okay, position. so fake four bets. <laughs> yeah, he grabbed two chips, uh, then seven chips, dropped them on, just calls. Is, um, and wow. Elton <coughs> saying he's flopped the nuts. Paul Flaws flopped the no. second nut no, flush like draw, really but he doesn't know he's drawing dead. Yeah, that's pretty pretty sick. What's your favorite game, Phil? Paul can't fold this flop. Yeah, especially if he's calling this out of position, he thinks that Elton's got some garbage in his hand. So he wouldn't. They're so deep though that he, he can't really lose too much. Right, he's, oh, check, check. Okay, so Elton, slow playing, thinks he smashed it too hard. Like Does yeah, Paul no take a stab no, here no, with no, the second nut flush any, draw? Yeah. And I think that was want. a pretty greedy, it's it's just, greedy checker. I, I don't know what the word is, but uh, uh, Paul like fake oh four God, bets. Right, you think he's call. got like maybe like jacks or like something that can years. at least call one little bet. Right, he doesn't have just no hand where he fake four bet then called. So he should. Yeah, it is. You? He's like you would, a, you would prefer to bet like 50k than check. Like sure right, yeah. Elton's just going for the for massive yes. trick. I, it's hard to know what their history is too. Where, you know, oh, maybe they 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 played some, too. they have some dynamic between them that it's hard for us to read into. It's super fun. Well, Paul's actually in a tricky spot. He's got a good draw from his point of view. Right, but it, but it'd be surprising for Elton to fold. Right, like who checks back this flop? To fold. to fold the turn. Yeah. Like four right, like right. jacks will always see a turn and queens. So if you're betting this turn, I guess you should have the intention to bet the river, but that would be awful in this situation. Right, right. I think uh, it seems like he'd be served just by check calling. He might, you know, he might have the best hand if occasionally. You know, some goofy hand that Elton has a spade that won't like check behind. Like if he had jack ten really officer with a spade or, or sure. something. Maybe like an ace ten with a ten of spades. 
I like games for right, that. Right, but Ellie, Ellie shouldn't fold to his bet. It's not so big. Like, uh, Ellie's not just three bet an ace queen of, of like on, diamonds and then check behind. He's gonna try to win the pot. So Paul Flaw does decide to bet 140,000, about 75% of the pot. A no-brainer call for Elton, in my opinion. Just seems like raising gets the bluffs to fold. Yep. Yep. And, it's, and this, it doesn't like represent anything. Check behind, raise, like you're. Yeah, you want to represent a hand like jacks, queens, so that your opponent can put like a 300k bet on the river and then win those chips. So nice call. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of that big combo that was a king. I, I that. So that card, it makes it harder for, for Paul to bluff him off Jackson on that card. Yeah, it's, I, I would think that's a bad card for Paul to try to keep betting. Because some people get stubborn with like queens and jacks here, right? And Paul bet. Also, it's it's reasonable that Elman can have ace king. Yeah, uh, maybe may yeah. like, oh, I don't want to get check raise. Right, I, know, I know that straddle makes it so they're not super deep, but at the same time, the, with the money it, and the, the flop texture, maybe Elton wouldn't want to just bet call ace king there. Right, occasionally he bets ace king and sometimes he checks it back. Right, so. You know, maybe he has king queen, king Ooh, jack, right? Very possible. So Paul here, try and decide what his opponent has. He checks and gives it up. Yeah, on this texture, I think it's hard for if he wanted to make some suicide bluff where he just he rips it in. He he can't rep like you can't rep a king by doing that because I think it's there's so many better hands. Yep. So it just it makes sense just to give up. So Elton here should he be going for a small bet or a big bet with the practical nuts right now? Like what hands are you targeting? He, he might just know Paul has nothing. <laughs> so he needs to bet like 100k and hope for a random check raise? Yeah, because it's, uh, it doesn't make sense for Paul to check. I mean, Paul could, could check a king, but I would think so many people would bet it here that uh, Elton has to think that Paul's Paul can't have something that's going to put 400,000 right. euros. And my logic is, say Elton wants to bet like 500k pot, right? If he had a big hand, wouldn't he just bet the flop or turn rather than all of a sudden take oh if he had a bluff why would he all of a sudden wait for the river to start making a massive bluff right, right. wouldn't you bet the flop or turn usually maybe he had like eight seven offsuit or something yeah. but even that's just, you you just got a lot of showdown value yeah. so he's going for the big bet 360k looks like paul here raised queen high paul not gonna snap for he's gotta think about it i always want to make sure he's always laughing though. i love him Check. There you go, Paul. Put him on the one hand you can beat. He <laughs> <laughs> just said no. Uh, nice move by Elton. Have it, sipping whiskey with the nuts. Mm -hmm. Might be look. Might actually looks kind of strong, maybe. Sometimes these games don't feel real. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. You know, the, you know that you, feeling. They kind of can't, you know. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Like I've learned, you just gotta kind of turn it off. Spread the pot. What are you trying to represent? Four kings? <laughs> first time I played with these guys was like three, three and a half years ago, and that was the first time I had to turn it off. So I was just like, fuck it, man. So one thing in this spot, maybe, you know, maybe after thinking for a while, you decide that you want to just ship it in as a bluff. Mm -hmm. But Paul doing that whole acting thing where he's leaning back and doing that, he just right. he can never he can never raise as a bluff there. Go to the beach and stuff. I love you and the poker room going on. Right, twenty-four. was there. All right, so Ivy opens Ace Jack of Diamonds and. Elton calls of ace queen here. I played so bad this year. Fuck. No, that was Rich Powell. So Paul with Jack 10 is going to defend. Maybe probably one not going to go free bet. All right, so we got a three-way flop here. Uh, Ivy is the pre-flop raiser, and flops top pair out flops Elton, but Paul Paul flop flops top pair as well. Should see Ivy continuation bet here. Yeah, he's playing. 
idea how tan might play. Oh, you, you said tan? Tan, yeah. Oh, okay, no. Who were you talking about? No, 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 no. We want tan to play. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yes, he's not just sitting around for fun. Probably want to get fit at some point. I mean, I'm sure they let him play. He's not really, he's a pro, but he's not like really a stars pro or anything. Yeah, yeah, balls on top. All right, so Elton calls in position, and Paul Foy with top pair probably going to call, but he's a little bit worried about being outkicked. Look, this one, my. Alright, so Paul Fall turns two pair. And Ivy actually checks. I guess he's playing a bit cautious. Elton, when he calls with Ace Queen, likes to turn card, but it's a bit worried when Paul Fall comes along as well. And on this river, Paul should be checking. A lot of times the player has Queen Jack, King Jack, needs to get some value. He can represent like Miss Flush Draws. If he decides to check, it's unlikely someone will actually bet themselves as a bluff. I never did since I got here. So he's going to actually and pot size yeah, bet. I think so. Huh? 215,000. Well, 230,000, excuse me. Just many days in didn't go very much. Snap call by Ivy. Yeah, certain things. I, I know quite a lot about like specific things in training. Like what? Like um, strength and conditioning for explosiveness and speed. Yeah. And then I know a lot about nutrition. Yeah. But not like professional level or anything. But good enough to like get basically anybody in shape. Have you ever competed? Or? <laughs> I was a sprinter in university. <laughs> um, and like no. basically all you do as a sprinter in the off season, just try to get as strong as you possibly can for your body weight. That's so true. Okay. And then, yeah, you take the setup. Yeah. So wait, since, since the series has started, Dan's been to the gym every day. How many points has that been? I mean, it's quite a few points, I think. Yeah. You a couple Make sure you're healthy. Healthy. Yeah. Right. Healthy I means a lot. Maybe we shouldn't talk about that right here. Yeah, yeah, let's stop yeah. running our mouth. <laughs> Good idea. Well, sweet. Might get, might lose a couple points. Yeah, oh, yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Alright, so Paul's gonna open 30,000. This is a straddle pot. It's whoever just knows more about gamblers? No, it's more like we have to have a judge or something. You got a little better at Chinese, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he did it. He's Chowdy Ma now very good. <laughs> Tom, are you fluent? My Chowdy Ma? Oh, oh, like oh, 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 even if you don't speak the same language as someone, I know you kind of have an idea like, like, oh, you want more chips, or oh, you want more like faster, or something like this, you know. Has to be one of the hardest things to do. I know. I don't know if that's true. By, I think I'm just, uh, some clock. people are like wired different, and I think I'm Jong really bad. Clock. I'm like really, I, know, I mean, I kind of speak like an idiot, right? I'm not no, good at grammar and wrong. stuff to start. I said it's supposed to be something like, yeah, everything about that I'm bad at, and then let alone another language, you know, it's like, would you doubt some by, Got some things yeah. I'm good at. Ping wow. pong, am I right? And, uh, <laughs> short deck, wait, wait. Yeah. 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 But language is not one speak. He was just speaking right now. So, Paul Fua calls here with Jack-9 high. 
There's 466,000 euros. Really good at uh, bass fishing. <laughs> King three offsuit. Yeah, I'm really good bass fishing. Austin. Is there, nice secret town. What do you do? What's the name? Oh, there's tons of skill. Yeah, you gotta read the. Uh, the uh, you you like Different uh, structure. You during different yeah, times of year yeah. where fish uh, frequent, like and different depths of water. And considering how clear the water is. You got a yeah. fish going on. Oh, this is a beer yeah. brand, Dogfish oh. Head. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Where are you fishing? Uh, fishing in Vancouver? King Kong. Uh, no, I mean, back in West Virginia, oh, I did Jean, all the time. Jean, yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever I was living in San Diego, there's an insane lake. What's the best place you've ever fished? Uh, one. Huh? Uh, speak English. Speak the best Mandarin, like, right? huge bass was this uh, little, like, uh, almost like uh, pond, uh, water reservoir in uh, close to San Diego, 40 minutes north, called Dixon Lake. I caught, like... In one day, I caught five bass over like six pounds each, and that's like a bass, a six pound bass, a big fucking bass. Really? Yeah, like the world record's like 22 pounds or something, and like if you ever get one over 10, it's like, you know, you legend, it's like mouth is this big, and it, you know. And yours was how many? I caught like, like four or five in one day that were over six no. pounds at that this lake in California, which isn't like crazy rare for this lake. Uh, well, that was probably the coolest uh, place I've ever fished. No, I didn't but I crush it in West Virginia, like on my lake I grew up on and stuff. It's not so bad. So Paul Fall River is the best hand. No, but I, uh, whenever I was a little kid, very interesting float to check this turn card. Uh, like a semi tournament at our lake, this lake called Stonewall Jackson Lake. And there were 85 teams, and like 82 of them had bass boats, and I was a kid fishing off a bank, and I got third place. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Now, like, it still gets a little, but now, now, like, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, there's one or two things yeah, that were eaten, and it was just all the time. Oh, so, there's 466,000 euros in the spot, and everyone's talking about fishing. Show me your covers. Come on. So Paul Fua wins 238,000 euros floating Jack Nine High. We are both on my calendar. Drink! It is fire fired. <laughs> you sit down and then you can just start waiting. No, this is no. I don't think get played ahead. Alright, so Jason Kuhn opened 11,000. This is not a straddle pod, just yeah. 2,000, 4,000 with a 4,000 ante. <laughs> Kane Callas is going to squeeze with pocket tens right now to 55,000. It's kind of like the first uh, pot he's three bet. Jason Kuhn of Ace Queen might feel this is a tighter range, but might still feel a little obligated to see a flop. You look funny on TV. Yes. Up to you. Okay. The Chinese like funny faces. Okay, okay. Oh shit, I'll do the same then. So he is gonna actually four bet here. To 120,000. His read is that Callus is just gonna play very straightforward. So this is Kane's first three bet. He's been four bet. I don't need a visa, do I? So I think Kane's gonna try and see a flop. He's gonna have uh, 2 million. 120,000 uh, euros each in there. That's the cool thing about JJ. Flop is 653 rainbow. For the rest of South Korea, you gotta apply for the visa. And Macau has seven days. Visa. But so, so this is why JJ's. It's closer than Macau to Shanghai. And, uh, hey, Tom, is JJ better than Manila? Really? Better than Manila by like uh, safe rice. Yeah. It's safer, I'm sure. Yeah. Jeju, we get all oh. our. Oh. I mean, I don't even know about yeah. this like Jeju or something, but Manila is definitely like on the bottom of any rating. So. You see the shit that just happened there? The 
So 128,000 from Jason Kuhn. Can't imagine Callis doing anything but calling. Really big problem. The head of the Supreme Court, they were pushing out, which was like. The end I remember of we had. Or I remember we had a Triton there, and like a week after or something, there was some shooting in casinos and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they, they were like appealing, so I don't know if the the Chief Justice lady is gonna get back in. But well, Manila, Philippines. Yeah. All right, so he's gonna go for calling chips. Nice, huh? Like the yeah, weather, like especially is so nice. Yeah. If there's a problem, we don't go. And Here comes a turn. Current Kuhn has 24% chance to win the spot. Looking for an ace or a queen. The turn's a 10, so top set for Callus. He's got a 100% chance to win here. He should just keep checking, trying to let Kuhn barrel him off of a pair, I suppose. You're making this JG place sound really like some place I don't want to be. No, it's all right. It's, it's fine. It's like... Yeah, I mean, it's maybe, not. Jagger, you buy another condo, eh? yeah. villa, villa. <laughs> See how this game goes. I it's bought, like I bought two villas. Yeah. Two big villa. Uh -huh. It's smaller villa. I one, think I can give you one. Coon's got to be careful that Kane has like pocket jacks or yeah, pocket queens a lot, and I really don't think he's gonna fold yeah. those hands. Yeah, he actually no, has no, top the set. Oh, you mean the the Janu ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Like Within Jeju. the property. Oh, they're very nice. By a condo. Okay. Jeju. Jeju Shinhua. Oh, okay. S H I N. Yeah. H W A. Uh, is Jeju it as expensive? Is it as expensive as the one here? More. Cheaper, 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 cheaper. No. 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 Imagine it sounds cheaper. Oh. Um, Jason Kuhn betting 160,000. Huh? I feel like he's betting like this to shove the river. That's a blank. Trying to represent aces and kings. Last year, this year I sold it for 18 million. Oh, really? Nice. You sold one. You have two. So. I didn't know that. So Kane calls again. I don't really think Kuhn expected Kane to fold the turn too much. So I hope Kuhn has a plan. 839,000 euros in there. I think people are being a little bit more quiet now that the spot's getting bigger. River's an ace. That is a bad card for Jason Kuhn. He might think he can value shove this hand. Kane is loving this card because this is a good river card to bluff at. Also, Kuhn might actually have ace, king, or ace, queen. Kane should check. Feign weakness. Try to make it look like you have jacks or queens. That is scared of the ace. All in. Oh. So Jason Kuhn shoves all in and Kane Callis. He played one pop, but he just won 920,000 euros, 131,000 euros. Very sick. Yeah, it's the, the room is silent now because... Can just check this stock, yeah. This yeah, is okay. this is a huge pot. Yeah, Jason Koo made a play at that one and... You know, I think he was going to shove anyways, but like he was excited that he actually got to quote-unquote value bet his ace. You have these 200 right there, Jason. Oh, yeah. It's not a straddle pot. I mean, tell us to this text in the table. What's that? Huh? What'd you say? It doesn't feel that true. I guess it depends on how much you have in crypto. Set hunting! <laughs> I thought you're not. You know, Paul says he's set hunting right now. with 8 6 suited. Trying to put some mind games on his opponents. 
at like 33% in my portfolio. Now I have less. There are a lot of people who wanted to keep 25% of their net worth in cryptocurrency when it was $1,000 a coin. And within six months, it's 20000 a coin. And now they're forced to have 90% some of their net worth in it unless they want to pay short-term capital gains taxes. Oh. So, so they got to hold on to it for a year. So if that's the case for you, it's a lot more gamble in crypto than there is in poker. Yeah. Coon flops a straight flush draw. Short Six, nine is a straight... Looking for the nine of clubs or the, I mean the nine of hearts or the four of hearts right now. Love to see a straight flush on in our big cash game. Uh, but Tom Duan's got the best hand. He's gonna bet top pair, ten kicker. Elton, he's got bottom pair for nut flush draw right now. He's actually going to make the call, or is he check raising? He's going to make the call with bottom pair. He's very suspicious of Tom. They've got a lot of history, but Jason Kuhn actually might check raise here. He can put a lot of pressure on these type of hands. Yeah, he, he's going to raise to 100,000. I mean, he's stuck about 800,000 euros, so I can see why he wants to raise and just put a lot of pressure. I wonder if Tom Duong can read into this and maybe call a flop check raise and kind of see what happens on the turn. But I think he's going to let it go. The way he's grabbing his cards. Actually, no, he might call. He's Tom's thinking about what happened previously. Kuhn bluffed off a lot of his chips. Would Kuhn actually try and bluff off more chips? What happened to Sam? What, what happened on the flop? So he's going to let it go. And Elton probably got a fold bottom pair. Maybe Elton's going to call here. With just bottom pair. No, he re-raises to 324,000. This is a... Mm. A weird play. I'll turn it off. It might be like a little bit. I mean, don't say anything. Wow. Jason Kundo, I mean, he has a very good hand. Just six high, but he's just got 55% chance to win. I think he's just going to call and see what happens on a turn. He doesn't think Elton will ever fold to a shove. He actually would. So here comes the turn. Elton trying to decide what Kuhn has. Turn is a queen. Elton has the nut flush draw of his pair of sevens. 736,000 in here. Now, Elton was pretty much giving up, but on this card, he actually might shove. Elton's trying to represent a set or two, like ace eight or ace seven right now. I'm not sure what he put Kuhn, what he puts Kuhn on right now, but he knows Kuhn lost a million chips. They've never played before with each other, I believe, with such big stakes. What's that now? What's big yeah, something? Now? So no one really has a read on each other. Yeah, I would love to see yeah, Elton ship it all in here. Nikita, mm -hmm. I will firstly bust from my full deck. The way Elton played the hand, man, I really can't really put him on a hand. It just seems like we called a bet, got check raised by the preflop raiser, and then re raised to 300,000. So he's going to bet. He's going to bet a lot. He's just going to shove them all in. <laughs> okay, he shoved in. 390,000. He's got 540,000 behind. A half pot bet. Jason Kuhn's got so many outs, but he's only got 30% now. Jason Kuhn's got position. So he technically can call. I would never shove in Jason Kuhn's spot because he has no fold equity. 
so he should uh, only call like, with, with position. Jason Kuhn already down like 800k right today. He can get all his money back in his hand or he can lose a million euros. Possibly more because I think they were deeper. He makes the call. There's not very many chips remaining. Elton. Uh, 1.5 million. This pot could be bigger than the last pot we just saw. I played with him enough that I don't think he's got a so soft girl. Let's just put it that way. Rivers of four. Jason Kuhn makes the nut straight. Uh, I was more afraid that he was just fucking cheating, but I don't think that's the case either. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't see how he could also be cheating. It's 1.5 million in there. Oh, yeah, okay. That's the way, but. Uh. I'm sure, I think it's fine, I don't think it's losing any. Jason Kuhn is so relieved to see the sure four. That. Elton so trying to decide if he can make a bluff. Yeah, mine is nowhere near that. Mine, you know, I wasn't like that close. I was, I was five much. steps. Away. You were like, <laughs> your foot was in the air. Trying to decide if he can shove here. I was like, what do you mean? Like, Just a pair of sevens. I, I, I was like, I couldn't, you know what I mean? I, I had the same kind of thing, but further away. What do you mean I, if I lose this, I'm dead? What do you mean? Hold on. Jason oh, Kuhn just praying for so Elton to shove. So, so. A so lot. Slow. Yeah. Should it be slow, but. We should play, we should play with the shot. Or after that. It's always fast. 30 seconds. Elton realizes Kuhn only has a third of the I mean, pot like, remaining. You know, usually playing slow in cash game, right? But, but it's, it's just super slow, it's not just an attack. Oh, I mean. So he checks, yeah, he yeah, gives up. Jason Kuhn's gonna so shove. Close to the player I played. Where's Max? Maybe, I wonder okay, if Elton like, will consider a hero call. call. Mm -hmm. yes. no. so so why... If Jason Kuhn can have 6 5 of hearts, then that yes, means he could have 10 9 of hearts as well, right? So, technically, Jason, I mean, Elton does beat a couple hands. I guess king ten of hearts and jack ten of hearts occasionally. But there's so much, so many chips in there. Two million in the middle. Everyone's a bit silent now because of how big this pot is. At this I say nothing. If he's slow, I like to say something. Because nine hand is it's a very small really. so Alton trying to decide what hands he can beat. Ten nine of hearts, the most likely hand he can beat. But if he has ten nine of hearts, his opponent can also have six of five of hearts, which is what's good? what he's up against. Huh? It's very few hands he actually beats uh, here. I wouldn't say good. I, did, I, I, I didn't guess even play for like ten nine of hearts and King 10 of hearts, Jack 10 of hearts, if, that's assuming they played the hand this way as well. I mean, he really wants to make a hero call, a pair of sevens, but it won't be, it won't be good. Because if Jason Kuhn had a, a hand like King, Queen of hearts, he'd probably just check it back, because usually he's up against two hearts himself, so nice fold. Oh, can't on, show the bluff. Can't do it, man. There's a time. This is the time. S6 of us? No. Jason Kuhn wins 789,000. He's actually up money right now. 2.1 million there. Is that the other car? In his starting stack. Not the other car. <laughs> he's in for 2 million. <laughs> Damn, he's opening it up. A6 off. Firing. <laughs> Jason Kuhn is up 90,000 after losing 900,000 to Kane Callis. 